May all beings be happy, may all beings be healthy, may all beings be free from harm, may all beings love life, may all beings awaken. Welcome to another QQ Audio Podcast. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So today I'll do a brief life in Bali. Uh, uh, And that's just going to tell you uh, something that uh, I've done recently. Um, So uh, I went to my dentist, just a four-minute walk away. Something else had fallen out. My teeth sometimes... You know, uh, 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 remind me of the glaciers. Pictures you see of glaciers where part of them are breaking off. Um, I mean, most of my teeth are right. Uh, I had all four wisdom teeth until about, mm, I don't know, four years ago. I was having a problem in 911, sort of like mm, uh, a sort of pricey place to go here talked me into getting a wisdom tooth taken out. I should have gotten a second opinion. But um, any, and it was expensive as heck. Then I really regretted uh, doing it. It was like $350. That's way up. Well, I don't know why I did it. I shouldn't have. Um, hmm, that's terrible. I, you know, sometimes I'm sort of, well, it's already started. I just go along. And then later I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I have that sort of thing happen. Uh, so I had too much come out of one tooth. And she, she looked at it and she said, well, this is unstable. We're going to have to do a crown there. And you're going to have to have a post put in to get the crown. And, um, and, and she said the next one would... She thought we'd need a crown. She thought I needed two crowns. She sent me somewhere to get an X-ray, and uh, God, it was—it looked like it looked like some place that was closed. And uh, you know, nine one one has digital X-rays. A lot of people do, uh, and I really should always get digital X-rays. They're like one quarter of the radiation, um, but. So we arrived at this place, and it was, all they did, it was just a little store for uh, aloe vera items, as sort of health. Uh, Indonesia exports aloe vera. So, um, and the guy wasn't there, but I had a number. Um, I had a little piece of paper she'd give me. She said, go here, it'll be cheaper. You know, my my, uh, local driver in Yomine took me out there. So we sat a while and finally called that number. And he said, oh, he'd be, he'd be over in a minute. There was a, a barber shop next door. Everything else was empty. There was a big, like, warehouse in back that was empty. We walked around. It was all sort of a desolate scene. But anyway, the guy came. Oh, he was dressed in formal attire, like for a, a Hindu ceremony, white, with a... Uh, a head thing they call udang, mm, which is like a headband, but it it sort of sticks up in front. Um, And uh, so uh, we went in, and I thought, wow, I'm going to get an x-ray here. Then he opened the the back room to his office, and it was all nice and new looking and neat. And his uh, x-ray machine still had, like, plastic on it. And I said... uh, Oh, do you have digital? He said, yeah, here. He said, but this one's for uh, taking big x-rays. Yours will just use this one. And it was new. I went, all right, okay. Um, and uh, so he took it, and we waited. You know, man and I walked around, and, you know, just looked at stuff. And um, so he came back, and he said, so here it is. And uh, I said, Oh, okay. How much is that? And he said, no, oh, 100000 That's $7. <laughs> so I gave him 100000 And um, 
Then the dentist said, said uh, I'd like to see your x-ray. I said, yeah, I can bring it over. Because uh, like I said, she's nearby. She said, just take a picture of it. So I did with my iPhone. I took a picture of it. And so she made a date for me to come. Uh, and she said she was bringing a specialist in uh, to um, deal with it. You know, to, the idea was he'd prepare it for two crowns. Uh, and um, then so I got there and then they showed me and she's, uh, listen, she's completely honest. I've known her for years. The uh, specialist she brought in, been a good long time with her looking at the x-ray. You know, I brought the x-ray. Actually, when I arrived, she said, you have the x-ray. But I thought she said, uh, did you bring your wife? Because that's history and the way she said it. Um, and x-ray in Indonesian is uh, Ronsen. Uh, so I said, why, why would I bring my wife? She said, no, no, x-ray. Uh, I said, no, you didn't ask me to. So I had to go back home and get it and come back. But he hadn't arrived yet anyway. So um, then, you know, they looked at it and did that, and he looked at my teeth and everything. And he said, you know, you know th 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 this tooth here, had a root canal. Oh, that's what he was going to do. He was going to do a root canal on each one. He said, you really can't do a, a root canal on it. He said, it's too narrow. I can't get in there. I can't do a, a root canal there. He said, and then he told me all these complications. Uh, and he said, you know, the easiest thing is if we can take that out. Look, it's got a, it's got a cyst in the root. And it, we, we just can't get to that. So I went, all right. And we talked for about 30 minutes, looking at it and going over the options. Uh, and so I said, um, so uh, what's your charge? And he said, mm, 100000 <laughs> Again, $7, right? <laughs> Very nice. So um, I came back last night to get that tooth extracted because she had an oral surgeon come to her place. So, uh, you know, he hadn't seen the x-ray before. And he came in and he looked at the x-ray and he looked at my teeth and this and that. He said, hmm, I don't know if I can do this here. I think this needs uh, surgery. Uh, and uh, he said, look at that. They're showing me the, you know, just at the base and everything. I said, that's going to be hard to do. He said, I'll try to do a simple extraction, but... If I fail, you're going to have to go to a dental hospital and have surgery on it. I went, all right, okay. So then he tried to do a simple extraction. What it was like was having some really big pliers squeezed on my tooth and then yanking here and there and stuff. I felt like a building that was being hammered on and, you know, and he was drilling and stuff. And, and then, bang, it would crack part of it off. And it was it was so extreme, uh, and so he did stuff like that, and and I spit bits of tooth out, <laughs> and then he said, mm, "Can't do it, got to go to the hospital." And, and so I said, um, "Well, okay." He said, "You want to go now?" I said, "Yeah." So he drove me there. And um, it's the Saraswati uh, Dental Hospital, and it's part of Saraswati University. I'd been there before. I cannot remember what for. But, you know, he said, oh, it's about 10 minutes away. Oh, it's about 25 minutes away. But it didn't matter. He had a very nice car. Uh, it's 35 years old. We talked some on the way over. Um, and uh, he's from, he was born in Java, but he came here when he was five years old. So he's been here 30 years. Oh, he said he lived right by Tanalot. Now, Tanalot is the most visited tourist destination in Bali. He said he lived one kilometer from it. Uh, and I said, yeah, we take tourists, or we take friends. If there's a friend visiting, we'll take him to Tanalot. Uh, and I said, but the important thing to do when you go to Tanalot is to go when there's not a high tide or you can't get over to the temple because it's this little tiny temple on a outcropping of rocks. Uh and uh, if the tide's low, you're still going to have to wade through, you know, like ankle-deep, calf-deep water to get to it. 
and sometimes it's a little difficult. It's good to have, you know, be holding somebody's hand. And you go over there, and then they there's priests there, and they bless you and stuff, and sprinkle water on you. And um, uh, then you come back, and oh, yeah, there's... Uh, then, then you go into the snake cave, and there's a guy in there, you know, with a... Maybe it's a cobra. I don't know what it is. No, it's a python. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What's... What do we have here? Yeah, we have pythons here. They have boa constrictors in South America. Something like that. Anyway, you go in the cave and you see that guy. That's sort of cool. And uh, then up top, it's all pretty funky and you got to walk over rocks and things to get to all this. But once you get up top, there'll be a thousand tourists up there. Most of them won't even go down, you know, uh, because there's all these... Chinese uh, tourists who are sort of dressed nice, and I mean a lot of them do, and various it, it, and then they just have like rows and rows and rows of stores that sell tourist stuff and this and that, you know, uh, and um, uh, so uh, anyway, he said he lived a kilometer away. He said next time you go, call me up, and uh, I'll show you around. Oh, and I said, oh, yeah, show me that Trump's place. Because right there, Trump is uh, with some Indonesian uh, investor. Is, they're building a six-star hotel uh, resort. Not hotel, resort. Um, so anyway, we got to the dental hospital. And, um, oh, I had these shorts I shouldn't have left home with. They're, they're swimming trunks. But they keep falling down. <laughs> I have to tie, I don't know what happened to it, the tie is bad or something. Anyway, so I go in, and um, uh, so he starts working on me there. And boy, that was more extreme than the prior one. It was so extreme, I mean, it's it's really, it just felt like there were jackhammers and industrial drills going on in my mouth. And it was so, but it didn't hurt, you know. He, you know, he gave me some Novocaine, I suppose, and and uh, that didn't hurt getting it, you know. The thought of getting needles stuck into my gums and stuff has never appealed to me, but usually it doesn't really hurt. I didn't hardly feel anything when he did it. Anyway, so it wasn't hurting much or anything. It was just so extreme what was happening, you know. I was being, like, pushed around and tugged on and b banging in my mouth, and it, I, I started laughing. <laughs> I said, I, I hope I'm not interfering with your work. <laughs> but anyway, so he got through with it and gave me some antibiotic. You know, it's dangerous to go to get into your uh, uh, bone there because um, th th there's bacteria in your mouth that wants to get to your brain and your heart, and uh, it's not good. Uh, so you gotta be careful, like, in putting posts in, you know, you don't want it to go through the bone into whatever's next. Um, but, um, you know, and he gave me some pill, he said it was a painkiller, but it's not, it's an anti-inflammatory, because uh, Katrinka checked it out, you know, just wrote the name. And, um, but I guess that's a bit of a painkiller. So I went home and, you know, I didn't tell them that I'd take a, a cardio aspirin because if I had it, they would have post told me to stop and postpone it a week. But the day I came home and I just went straight to bed, you know. I had gone swimming in the middle of the day, so I had taken a shower. But I just went straight to bed. It didn't brush my, well, you know. And, Oh, when I was there, I had to gargle this antiseptic stuff. And beforehand, I had to gargle it for a minute. Then I could do that. But afterwards, I was supposed to gargle it for 30 seconds. Well, my lips were so numb that I was leaning over into the like the little tiny dentist basin and trying to gargle, and it was just spurting out of my mouth. I couldn't, I, you know, and I thought, I never think about that. We can we use our lips to keep our mouth sealed when we have things in it so they don't just leave. Well, that was sort of funny. Anyway, so uh, 
I called a taxi. I have a little app for a particular taxi here, and he picked me up. And I paid. I'll, I'll tell you what that cost. One million two hundred fifty thousand, about eighty-eight dollars. Um, and um, hmm. So, oh yeah, and he, you know, he sewed. It was surgery, you know. He was sewing. Uh, he had to sew me up in my mouth with stitches. So, um, so I was going on with the taxi driver, and I asked him where he's from, and he said Florence. And um, they're usually Christian. It's an island several a little further uh, east from here. See, it's Vale Lombok Flores, I think, is what it is, and then Komodo. There might be another one in there, too, I forget. So, uh, you know, we're talking, and he goes home for Christmas every other year, he said. And I said, how long have you been here? 30 years. That's so far. So I had two guys who've been here 30 years. All right, now... I got home, and I just went straight to bed, like I said. And and I had gauze. He'd given me gauze to keep in the hole, you know, and it would just get soaked with blood, and then I'd get a new one. And, uh, you know, I came home, and I, I, had to, I had to finish a podcast, not record it, just process it and put it up. And then I just lay there, and Katrinka and I watched an episode of Colony, <laughs> and uh, but I kept bleeding, and so I had to get a towel to put over my pillow. Uh, she said, "Well, the 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 pillowcase is red." No, I said, "It's, it's maroon. You, we don't want blood on it." And so I used a towel, but I didn't get any. But it really didn't stop bleeding until the middle of the night. Just a little bit. Uh, you know, but it just kept coming. I could tell, you know, because uh, I would spit and there would be blood. But that was my exciting uh, Bali experience yesterday. And today, I haven't felt any pain. I'm going to take... He told me to take that anyway. I said, I bet I don't feel much pain. Uh... And he said, take it anyway, because I think it, the anti-inflammatory he thought was important. So I don't really feel much or anything. And I haven't been in any pain, but I've been low, very low energy today. And I slept 11 hours last night. That's pretty good, huh? Okay, uh, pardon me for, I'm, I guess this is uh, not what someone would wish for if they were going to learn something about Bali. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> now I've got to get two crowns, a bridge, she said. I said, well, is it two crowns or a bridge? Or are they the same? I think the bridge is two crowns. Or the bridge, I don't know, whatever, she's going to do it. And I'll tell you what that'll cost. I said, you can compare with what it costs there. That's going to cost me about $10 million. About it might cost eight. I might be able to get it for eight because it's a bridge instead of two crowns, and maybe I'll get it for seven. But if it's ten, that's seven hundred dollars. If it's eight, that's seven five hundred and sixty. So that's a lot for us. But mm, I don't think I want that hole in my teeth. So um, you know, uh, that's. That's what happened yesterday and today, and this has been a Cuke Audio Podcast, another episode of Life in Bali. <laughs> I'm D.C. Poopa of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Dog and Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely good drink. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.